Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we have a rare one for you. Stag Jr. Single Barrel. Dustin, you picked this bad boy up here recently. Comes at a whopping 67.4% ABV. I didn't even know until you found this bottle and you, you sent me the text, like, look what I got. I didn't even know they did single barrels. Just started this year, Mike. Nice. They're doing picks, so that's the only way you're getting is through picks, but they're... Instead of like, you know, putting these ridiculous tater stickers on there, they're putting really nice stately sticker from Buffalo Trace. And the beautiful part is, Mike, and mm -hmm. of course they've made it hard to read, um, but they're telling you which Ooh. rick house, which I believe was H, which floor, floor one on this one, rack two. Yeah, warehouse H, floor one. And then they're rack even two, yeah. telling you when it went into the barrel. They don't tell you when they bottled, but you know the bottling was within a couple months. Yeah. And this one comes in just short of nine years old. Nice. Yeah. It's a good offering. You know, I like these anyway, you yeah. know, just in general. You know, they're always good ABV and everything mm -hmm. else like that. Man, 60, 67 seems high, even for this whiskey. Am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. I, I mean, we, there was a uh, George T. Stag that came in at that hazmat 140 range. Mm -hmm. So it's happened. Ooh, you are pouring heavy today, buddy. <laughs> I'll switch it. I'm more of a bourbon guy than I am. But yeah, I mean, you got this, um, man, two weeks ago? Dude, you Two, three were just, weeks. just destroying this Dude, bottle. I love it. I, I, I love Stag. I, I did pour, I think I did pour a couple friends some, a couple ounces out of here. But yeah, mostly that's just me drinking. <sighs> yeah, you gave someone an ounce. Give someone a 0.75. I think I did two. 20 milliliter. Two, anyway. two short, <laughs> two short <laughs> ounces. <laughs> I, I, I always love these, man. Yeah. So I'm excited to get into it. Let's see if uh, a single barrel makes any difference whatsoever. Not that we have two to compare, but... Beautiful, dark, rich yeah. color, heavy pores. Yeah, we've never done any of Stag uh, Juniors, uh, the two of us. I think you've done one maybe way back in the day. I think I did one, yeah. And you did like a batch six or seven. You mm -hmm. did an old batch. We need, to, we need to do more of these. Yeah, I've got a couple at home. I, I'll be honest, I don't know that I'm even going to see the batch 16. It's gotten so popular and so hard to get. But Not easy. Lucked into this one, and uh, man, I really have hit this thing hard. <laughs> I clearly liked it, guys. Mm -hmm. Man, beautiful burnt sugar. Yeah, it's like burnt brown sugar. Burnt sugar with toffee mixed into that thing. Oh yeah, toffee, mm -hmm. nice oak. It's a little closed off, and we'll talk about as we add water to this one again at the crazy proof here. That's gonna be an obvious thing we're gonna do. Sometimes when you think cast strength, you think you're gonna this explosion on the nose, and sometimes you do. Yeah. And sometimes it's like this, like with, um, you know, it's like, reminds me of a lag one, like it's taking a second. But what I am getting initially, that burnt, mm -hmm. burnt, burnt brown sugar and burnt caramel, Man, it is lovely and candied. Yeah, what I'm also getting here that's unique about this single barrel that we've picked up here versus like a batch 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, this one has a little bit more of like a hay note, a little bit of a barn note, a little bit of a hint of nuttiness. It reminds me a twinge more of a Heaven Hill product than a Buffalo Trace product mm -hmm. initially on the nose. I don't know if warehouse H and floor one and all that other stuff means something similar to what like Caden and Springbank mean when they think dirty old leave you in the basement warehouse but it smells warehouse H better. is a very very famous very special warehouse in the Buffalo Trace lore it feels like light doesn't even make it to that warehouse I think it's aluminum so it may actually not <laughs> smell is it, there's just a dark smell to it dark earthy smell. oh yeah this is very earthy like, that's something you don't get as much on Buffalo Trace. Usually I think of Buffalo Trace as clean, sweet oak. Mm -hmm. This is much more earthy, much darker. This is definitely not a barrel that they would have... This is not profile for Stag, which that's what people are looking for when they get these single barrels. They want something different that they're not used to. They want something reminiscent. They want it in the ballpark, but they want, mm -hmm. they want to try a different, a different spin on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this feels darker than all the other Stag Juniors I've ever had. Yeah, you're not getting the cherries that you get so often on Buffalo Trace on the nose here either. I agree. Like, usually that's one of my favorite things is I love cherry notes on bourbon. You get those a lot on some of the better middle-aged, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten-year-old bourbons. I see, yeah, right. they get a special on Buffalo Trace, and I love cherry. I, I get cherry on the George T. Stag at uh, 20 years old. This is dark, dark oh, sugar, and it's burnt, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I, this is the type of whiskey that smells so burnt to me that it almost feel like you could have wood chips in the actual whiskey itself. Yeah, but again, it doesn't come off um, astringent. No, or not, like, not in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't have, like, because again, like, it doesn't smell over oaked, but it's an oak driven nose. It's, but it's beautiful oak. No, it's just, it's just there. Dark, dark, dank, powerful, dry oak. It feels like a, like a heavy char. Yes. Mmm. 
now it's, it's starting to transition to more sweet notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, caramel was always there, and bourbons are sweet to begin with in general. But when this started out, this started out sort of dry, like a scotch in a lot of yeah. regards. Mm. Ooh, buddy, that alcohol is on that palate for sure. All right, what are you getting? So I do get a little more of that buffalo trays, fruity, cherry note. I really wouldn't say distinct cherry, but it's, I, I think that's what it is. And, and let's do the water a little heavy on these, Mike. Because they're a, this super high ABV, I think is gonna need a little bit more than usual. Um, yeah, I mean, we're getting the brown sugar. Again, it's brown sugar. It's not just like vanilla and yeah. caramel, it's brown sugar. It's burnt slightly- Burnt chocolate. Burnt chocolate, burnt, a lot of burnt notes. But like really, but again- Burnt oak. Plum, like a plum skin, like on yeah. a grill. But it's like a chef burnt it. Like, it's not like, you know, uh, it was meant, you it was meant to happen. Yeah. It was meant to happen. Like, it's like they make the dessert in front of you and they bring out the torch and they kind of hit it to just give it a nice little toast. Sear? Yeah, yeah. Like a sear. Mm. This isn't, you forgot the hamburgers on the grill for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This was intentional. This isn't that frozen pizza you forgot for 20 minutes and you came back and you're like, uh, better eat it, I guess. This would be a great cigar whiskey. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. To me, on the palate, it is. Burnt brown sugar, mm -hmm. burnt chocolate, burnt oak. Just, I mean, again, I, I can almost taste the side of the cask with this. Yeah, one. there's, there's a little bit of the, red fruits. Yeah, but then the sweetness comes mm -hmm. in. Remember I said like that sugary uh, yeah. uh, plum thing again? But then the sweetness kind of comes in. And again, when, I, when I'm saying brown sugar, that's still, there is some sweetness, but it's just so scorched. And that's what it feels like at first, just scorched earth. And I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, that is right up my alley as far yeah. as what I want in a, in a well-aged bourbon. What does jump out here that I, I mm. it's not super obvious necessarily, but compared to regular stag releases, there is definitely a slightly earthiness to this one. A little barnyard, mm -hmm. a little nutty. Definitely darker. And you don't get that usually on the stags. You get more, again, you get more fruit, you get more, you know, I didn't say it, but you know, this what this also has is antique leather. Yeah, it's almost transitioned like peanut shell and like yeah, yeah. dusty book leather. Yeah, and this doesn't come off as, a, this comes off like older bourbon, but not old bourbon. Like it's not 20 year old bourbon, but it definitely, comes off like they put some 15-year-old bourbon in here, which it, it, there isn't. We know it's a single barrel that's under nine years old, but it has old bourbon notes. It does have the old bourbon sweetness, though. I don't know what you mean by old bourbon sweetness. It has some sweetness, but it's a dry, well, rough sweetness. You know how like, in Kentucky, like, I mean, it just, that vanilla explodes on that thing. I try to compare other yeah. bourbons to that whiskey, but... George T. Stagg does sure. the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, we did, like, uh, we've done, like, The Lost Prophet again. You know how sweet that was? Those are a lot of older whiskeys, though. But that's what I'm getting at, is it doesn't have those notes like that I get when you get really old bourbon mm -hmm. where the reason why it aged that long was because it got so sweet that they were like, we can just keep throwing oak into this thing because it's killing it. Yeah, this this is this is a solid experience though. The aggressiveness of this whiskey and the uniqueness of it compared to what I was expecting. Yeah. Now, man, with the water, I'm getting more like a creme brulee where they've, you know, they've they've glazed it, they haven't burnt it, they glazed it with mm. the smoke. I'm getting and it's like it's it's vanilla that's been smoked oh man it the oak again is smoked oak not not smoked oak toasted it's yeah. like a toasted yeah. oak as i said this feels like a high char barrel mm. the chocolate notes on this the dark chocolate notes on this are incredible so i'm getting milk chocolate now on the nose there was dark chocolate before now i get both but i'm getting not milk. Picking a little bit better no, uh, so I said, I said it's both mm -hmm. oh no there's definitely some bitter oak but it's it's really nice bitter oak nice bitter chocolates mm. Oh man, it's getting sweeter. Man. Now I will say this, it's gotten more to the traditional stag profile, but still it's just, it's got its own thing. And mind you, the last three or four stags have all been hitters. I don't know about the new 16 that just came out. I saw uh, the Bourbon Ridge, Trev Wilson, mm -hmm. which by the way, if you ever want to get a good kick out of a, a review of a bourbon, check out at least like the first minute of that review for Trev. He spends about the first minute just repeating over and over again how hard and how rare <laughs> Batch 16 stag was to get, mm -hmm. and it's hilarious, guys. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely check that out. It was, it was pretty funny. All right, Mike. Now you're just getting overwhelmed with just a rush of flavors, alcohol. I can already see you're just taking it all in. What are you getting? It's so dark. I mean, again, man, dark chocolate, dark oak, that burnt brown sugar and caramel, man. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's not overly complicated whiskey. I love what it does, though. Man, that's a dark whiskey. I love. So there is a there's dark, a, oaky, smoky whiskey. I love the bitter finish on this thing because it's it's oh, not o, it's not over oaked. It's the, this, the bitter's there, but it's a good bitter. Oh no no no! I mean, again, I was never denying bitter. I know. 
I was saying I was getting like milk chocolate on the nose sure. with the dark. Never really got the milk chocolate. To me, it was always dark chocolate. But I like dark chocolate with a good bitterness. I got a little bit of milk chocolate in there. It's beautiful. Mm. Um, but yeah, the finish is just so bitter, smoked wood, but not that like... Mm. I don't know, like for you guys who uh, drink a lot of bourbons, maybe if you've had like an Elijah Craig 18, which at some point we'll probably get a review up on, where it's just, there's way too much oak at the end of that thing. This is different. It's like just the perfect amount of like extreme oak that tastes good. It goes along with everything else. It goes yeah. along with that, that those burnt, you said extreme. It goes along with those other extreme notes. Yeah. There's four or five of them, bang, 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 in a certain checklist, dom, dom, dominant whiskey right now. <sighs> Getting tons of chocolate now. Yeah, the ch chocolate was always hid there in wallops. Just coming in more and more. So, Mike, here's the real question. Let's forget price. Let's forget everything else here for a second. Worth 150, I'll tell you that. Yeah, how I'd buy for that. How does this come in when you compare it to, like, say, an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? Clearly better. I'm with you. I, I Cle think clear, the, clearly twice the whiskey. Oh, I don't know if I'm, if I'm there, but it's it's up there. Okay, so if I pay, I usually pay for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, what, seventy bucks or so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're... they're yeah, I, I would pay... When you said 150 I thought, man, so, yeah. I would pay... If Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is 70 75 bucks. this is, should absolutely be $150. I'm not saying it's twice the whiskey, but for the jump, it should be twice the yeah, price. Yeah, I mean, again, you don't... You never get twice the whiskey for twice the price. You get... And now what is younger whiskey? At no point does it double, because the prices go... Exp the prices are exponential. That, I, that's, I agree, right. All premium goods are exponential. Yes, this is better than any Elijah Craig barrel proof that I've had, and you know how much I like those bottles. Yeah, I don't know if it's better than everyone I've had, but it's... This is better than 90% of them. Better than the A119? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. What are we as far as a whiskey score on this one? I want you to go first, because actually I'm going to take what your score is into some type of gauge <laughs> for myself. You know, Mike... Um, Actually, I'm copping out when I say that. Yeah. You still let me, let me go first. Then. Go. So, as far as just a whiskey in general, something I want to go back to, I'd absolutely remember this. I'm going 89 out of 100. Just a general whiskey score. And I was close to a 90. Yeah. It's that good of a whiskey. You know what? I am going to say 90. You're going to go 90? Okay. It's that good of a whiskey. I just went back in and to nose it one more time, Mike. It's punchy, four or five things. But I it's like actually it. gotten super candied in a way that I love. Mm -hmm. And it's just reminding me of... I think I've added water half the times I've drank this, and I need to add water every time because water, just a little bit, does wonders, and a lot does even more wonders. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to go 80, 80, I'm between 88 and 89. My initial thought was 89, so I'm gonna stay 89. But, Mike, you going 90 is not shocking me. I think it's it's right there. I mean, you, it's shocking me because it's bourbon that you did it, but like, you know what I, like. I was debating going 90 myself at one point, and I just said, you know what I like. Yeah. I just, if it's good bourbon, you know what I like. Yeah. If it's King Kentucky, Stacks, you, yeah, you know what? Yeah. If it's really good bourbon, I like really good bourbon. Yeah. This is a really good bourbon. Yeah. I just, I feel like it needs to be a little more refinement needed for that 90. That's the only thing it's missing, but God, it's good. All right. So let me ask you this. Favorite Junior? This one? Uh, I did this side by side, the batch 14, and this is better. I haven't done it by the side by side the 12. The 12 is the one that everybody raves about as the best stag junior. We'll, we'll compare them. Maybe we'll do a stag shoot off uh, yeah. one day. That'll be fun. Let us know if you guys want to check that out. Anyway, I'm a little bit higher on this bourbon than Dustin. So first? Yeah. It doesn't happen <laughs> often. Um, that's why I wanted to go first, just because yeah. I, I had my thoughts and I didn't want to be influenced by you. Anyway, um, that's what we think about this whiskey. Incredible single barrel stag junior. Yeah. My first. I love it. Dustin, high score. Really wish folks did all next time. Happy cast strength whiskey. If you find one of these, let us know what you think. Next time.